Hi there, Internet. My name's Ollie and I love air guns. Welcome to the Classic Air Gun Show. Hello, Internet, and welcome to another episode of the Classic Air Gun Show. Today we're going to be carrying on the look at the Theban gas rams, but we're going to look at one that's a little bit more interesting. So in a previous episode, we did look at a Scirocco, a early Scirocco Deluxe. But today we're going to look at what I can only sort of describe as a, a Scirocco type Theoban prototype and, and the reason I sort of say that is because no one's really sure what this is and what this rifle represents so the the story of this rifle the story of this rifle came with I should say because I don't have sort of deep um, rooms of paperwork to back any of this up it's all supposition is that originally this rifle was owned by uh, Dave Theobald uh, you know, very famously, Bentayne and Dave Theobald set up um, Theoban, as most of you probably know, uh, and that this rifle was his and was part of um, their sort of testing of uh, various sort of stages of the development of the gas ram technology and the rifles of Theoban. So, you sort of compare it, it's, it's recognisable to most people as a Scirocco, looks like a Scirocco countryman with an impact silencer. It's not until you look closer that you start to see some of the changes. The most obvious to most people would be at the back here. So rather than having the Scirocco sloped design, I'll try and put a comparison picture in. So instead of that, you've got this, this flat end cap which is uh, really just a piece of plastic that's been, been fitted on the end. Uh, and it, with that, you get straight access to the, um, to the Schrader valve at the end. Uh, but that's not the most unusual thing. Also, here on the sort of um, bridge block, it's absolutely clean. There's no engraving whatsoever uh, on here, whereas normally you expect to see Theobin and, and the calibre. Also, underneath here, um, get rid of a bit of sawdust, Underneath here, where you, I don't know how well you'll be able to see that, uh, but where you'd normally expect to see, um, especially in early models, sort of TB and then the serial number etched in on the side here. Instead, it just says zero, zero. So no, uh, no uh, sort of serial number written in. Uh, other things, so the trigger, I'm not really sure exactly which of the the various models of trigger this is uh, could be doesn't actually look like something like an early Webley it uh, looks like a slightly later model um, but yeah so there's a number of things that are interesting here so the story uh, that goes with this the timeline is that at some point whether it was the very first Rocco's or whether it was a sort of, sort of subsequent um, design changes that this was you know a Theoban prototype rifle that was used to, to muck around with bits and pieces. Uh, then uh, sometime around the turn of the millennium it passed into the hands of a, a private collector who, who had that. At some point then there was an estate sale to a, um, to a gunsmith in Lincolnshire who then passed it on to uh, a gentleman called Ben who's, a, who's a, um, an, another sort of Theoban enthusiast. He then kept it for a, a sort of significant number of years, so about sort of seven, eight years, uh, before it then also sort of moved out of his hands and ended up with a, a gunsmith in the northwest, which was about probably about two, two and a half years ago, which is when it came to me. So that's sort of the, the convoluted last 20 years of, of this rifle. So it's, you know, it's at least 35 years old, if not over 40 years old. So exactly at what stage of the um, uh, the development of the first five years of Theobin it fitted into, whether it was the very start, whether it was a bit later, uh, this has clearly been part of that story and, and was modified over time. Other things are interesting, so when, when Ben had it, he um, he did send it to Theobin, uh, so, sorry, not Theobin, Impact, who, as most of you know, was sort of the, the, the engineering successor of Theobin, you could say. Uh, that was when they fitted this impact silencer uh, and they really corroborated sort of as much as they could uh, a lot of the sort of the, the urban legends that surround this rifle and its and its creation. One very interesting thing, so I've, I've recently had, had this sort of refinished and refurbed as, uh, you know, to 
not not wanting to sort of lose all patina, but just keep it in a full functioning order. And, and as part of that, I sort of, you know, access the uh, the Schrader valve and and just sort of check uh, the the power had had fallen off quite significantly. Um, so I just wanted to put a bit of bit more, uh, and it is an air gas ram in, in this one. Uh, put more air in the gas ram and get it sort of back up to uh, to firing uh, pressure. What we actually what I actually found though is when I sort of normally you think see an early Scirocco gas ram, you push it to around 300 psi. When you push this to 300 psi, well, the first thing I noticed was that it was incredibly hard to cock. So I knew something was up. Uh, fired it through a chronograph, and I'm, and I'm not on video going to say what it was, uh, but sort of quickly changed the um, uh, changed the pressure, pulled it down. It's now shooting a beautiful, ten, consistent 10.8 foot pounds, but at a psi that's significantly below um, what you would sort of normally see uh, in this sort of period Scirocco. So again, it's another thing that's a little bit different from the norm of this rifle. But look, this is not one that we sort of take to the range and review. It's not one that I'll talk about where you can get them because there's only one of these. But it is an incredibly interesting rifle. Uh, as I say, I've had it a couple of years. I, I am sort of moving this on as part of part of my collection to a uh, gentleman Cambridgeshire, rather appropriately. It's going back home to Cambridgeshire. But um, look, it's really interesting. It's too interesting not to not to share. Uh, I'm sure there are people out there who know a lot more about this rifle, its history, than I do. I've just shared what what I know to the best of my knowledge. But uh, look again, a really nice insight into part of the history of this um, of this wonderful British brand which I know a lot of you still love today so look I hope that's been interesting if you do know more about this rifle then please do contact me do correct me where I've got things wrong I'll leave uh, the email address for the channel at the end of the video as always but look I hope that's been interesting I hope that's been enjoyable and uh, I hope that uh, somebody out there can help me shed a little bit more light on this but look take care look after yourselves as always thank you for watching and see you at the next episode